In the world of arcane crime, nothing is real, and everything is more than reality. When I set about creating a magic system based on modern technology, I realized I would need to explore how these industrial wizards communicated with each other, and through what lens they observed and dissected the world. Would they really send owls like carrier pigeons? Would they gaze into crystal balls? Would they write on enchanted paper that would duplicate the message on another paper miles away? One night, while pondering this problem, I looked into the mirror, and I swear to you I saw my reflection try to tell me what to do. I couldn't make out what it said around the toothbrush in its mouth, but I figured I got the gist of it anyway. My imagination is too big for me. As a child, I learned the horror of the spectral duplication of reality as I stood before large mirrors. The constant, infallible way the mirrors multiplied my movements with their cosmic pantomime taught me that worlds exist beyond my own and that having a vivid imagination is not always a blessing. In more recent years, I have learned about other phobias associated with mirrors that go beyond my own experience. To some, mirrors reveal the reflections of ghosts, or perhaps act as a portal to the world where troubled spirits dwell. To others, the mirror may reflect their face, disfigured by strange misfortunes. To yet others still, the mirror may contort their movements in the dark and unnatural ways, inventing new limbs and imitating the movements of creatures that twitch, creep, and slither. And don't get me started on what happens when mirrors break. As long as I can remember, I both long for and fear to the possibility of having a twin. Would this twin be a superior replica, more handsome, talented, and popular? Or would he be my opposite? with nothing in common between us but our faces. These musings about mirrors and phobias, twins and opposites came to a crossroads when I read the ancient words of the Greek philosopher Heraclitus. In the 5th century BC, Heraclitus argued that reality holds itself together through a system of contradictions. Cold things warm up, the hot cool off, wet becomes dry, dry becomes wet, he wrote. Hot and cold merge to create temperature, dry and wet unite into humidity, birth and death forge life. This unity of opposites is as true for humanity as it is for matter. We idolize nature even as we pollute it. We save time, we waste time, we love our families, we hate our families, and so on. When characters in fiction portray this unity of opposites, we realize the character is something special, something worth paying attention to. We sense but don't understand that that character is just like us. For example, it is not Odysseus's intelligence that intrigues us, but his intelligence intermingled with his stupidity. Drunk from the success of his wooden horse, he brashly wanders into a cave looking for loot, only to find a giant cyclops who eats half his crew. He then outsmarts the giant, blinding him and escaping, only to give in to a moment of arrogance and taunt him, enraging the giant and the giant's father Poseidon, an act which keeps him from returning home for ten years. If I were to construct a story out of my sprawling world of magical tech, the choices I make need to illustrate this unity of opposites. This unity is where quality dramatic choices come from, and I find my magic mirrors are very useful tools for accomplishing this. Here is their history and how they work. The German alchemist Leibniz is the man responsible for bringing magic mirrors to the world. He dreamed of connecting the world through instant communication, but what he invented was far greater and far worse. When people think of Leibniz, the immediate words out of their mouth are usually, the man who invented the magic mirror. But don't be deceived. Magic mirrors are only the surface, the flashy exterior of his true invention. His invention that actually changed the world was not mirrors, but the dream. The dream is what connects us. The dream is that realm between the mirrors, where our reflections live and perform the tasks we set them. The dream is where the reflections of the world interact with each other. The dream, with its infinite and unknowable algorithms, tell us the news, the recipe of the day, and when to get the best deals on Atlantis. The dream tells you who you are, and who you are not. Your reflection stores your data, connects your calls, and searches the dream for any information you may need. It takes on your hidden personality, that part of you that you keep hidden from the world, that part of you you might not even know exists. When Leibniz created the dream, he, by extension, invented the magic mirror, the windows through which all of humanity can connect and communicate. Today, magic mirrors come in all sizes and shapes and are customized for a breathtaking variety of purposes. Desktop mirrors for office work, handheld mirrors for long distance calls, sculpting mirrors for illusion artists, and so on. Companies such as Fantasy Book and Atlantis were the early pioneers who saw how much potential the dream world possessed, and in 1721 became the first companies to exist primarily within it. Since then, millions of entrepreneurs have ventured into the dream, creating spells and magics impossible outside the world of mirrors. 
billions have tapped into this reflective world, and an unknowable percentage of the population lives surrogate lives through their reflections in that duplicating world every day. I sometimes wonder if the dream is the true reality, and we only the reflections. But what do I know? The dream, which we call the interdream today, still remains mostly unexplored, its potential untapped. This was proven when Tomlin Edmondson used his copper wand with a magic mirror to create the first illusion. Illusions are a branch of magic that allow the elements of the reflected world to temporarily come through the mirror. These invasive reflections cannot completely leave the mirror, some part of their body must always be in contact with the glass surface, nor can they touch anything. They are made purely of light and have a slightly see-through quality. Today, the illusion industry encompasses the majority of entertainment, Hollywood, illusion reality games, and so on. Illusions require a great deal of magical energy to create, and so are quite expensive. A technology that does not yet exist but is often dreamed of and hoped for, and may one day be a reality, is a reverse illusion, the ability to physically enter the dream through a mirror. Modern magicians believe this could revolutionize the travel industry, among others, but I digress. The dream has worked wonders on the world. Its illusions have delighted billions and created more millionaires than any other magical industry. It has connected the world through communication and business. But, I confess, not all is sunny and bright in the dream of humanity. Black magic is primarily a legal term, designating any spells, potions, or magic tech that the government has designated as illegal. But perhaps the most prevalent form of black magic is the nightmare, the street name for the dark dream. As the nightmare is illegal, it is not well understood by mainstream magicians, but its potential is terrifying. The novel I'm writing in this world is a detective story, and it shares some similarities to Seven. Of the two detectives who are my main characters, one is a young woman named Alice Blaylock, and it is her face that I have been painting for you. Although Although I cannot share all of her story with you, I will share what I can, for it is she who first told me about the nightmare. When Alice was 16, her father gifted her a pearl necklace to celebrate the special occasion. Standing before the mirror, she accidentally tapped into the nightmare. She still doesn't understand how it happened. One moment, she was looking at her reflection, admiring her pearl necklace. The next, her reflection became a terrible visage, like her, but not her, with bright and terrible eyes and fangs and claws, and she was climbing out of the mirror. Then all went dark. When Alice came to, the room was filled with a strange mist. Her eye color had changed to a bright gold, and her father had gone insane. It was this incident with her father that inspired her to become a detective and to never use a magic mirror again. Perhaps, if you subscribe to this channel, if you like and share this video, you may help Alice bring justice to the nightmare that destroyed her father's mind.